this is true. The other day I was stepping, I was walking down the street with my feet, and I stepped in a, in a, a, a mush. <laughs> and yeah, <laughs> I stepped in a mush, and I was like, okay, if you, there's no good kind of mush to step in. Um, and when I looked at the mush, it was the worst kind of mush. It was the dog poop. Dog poop. Um, so I stepped in dog poop, but then I looked at the dog poop, and I realized the dog poop was in a clear bag. <laughs> so I didn't like get any on my foot, but I did step in dog poop. So it was just contained in a bag, which means someone's like, put it in the bag, <laughs> and then put it on, on, on like the grass. Like it wasn't even in a weird, fun place. Like it was on top of a light post. It was in the grass where dog poop would be, which is concealed. And at first I got really angry. I was like, why would someone do this? Why would someone put dog poop so far as to put it in a bag? And then not clean it up. That's a monster. But then I realized, like, the feeling of relief I felt <laughs> when I noticed that I I thought the worst thing that could ever happen to me had happened. <laughs> that I had stepped in dog poop. But then I looked. And I was like, no, this isn't this isn't even on my shoe. <laughs> and like, I started to really appreciate life after that. And ever since then, I haven't taken any antidepressants. <laughs> hey, it's the Propaganda Show with Andrew Justino. Um, I'm really excited to do this. I'm really glad you all are here. I feel really empowered right now. I'm the man of the moment for a second. <laughs> but I'm not a man. I'm not a real man, really. Because if you look at me, I'm just definitely not a man. <laughs> I'm wearing a bandana shirt, <laughs> which is not super manly. And I always wanted to be a really strong man when I was growing up. I wanted to be like a real strong man. Like, not for the strength aspect, but like for the notoriety of being a strong man <laughs> in the 1920s. You know what I mean? Like, they had the strong men that were wearing like leopard print bathing suits and their mustaches were like really strong too. Like stronger than any part of me was their <laughs> facial hair, which I also cannot grow. So I failed that. I'm not a man, which is sad. But it's okay because it's also kind of in style to not be a man. And some people don't like that, but all the people that don't like that are the people that are the strong men. <laughs> and that makes sense that they'd be upset now because they worked really hard on this. They worked like a thousand hours at the gym and I've spent a thousand hours eating Cool Ranch Doritos. <laughs> but um, that's fine because uh, joke's on them, I get to die sooner. <laughs> no, it's all right. I don't actually want to die yet um, because I have a plan for how I'll die. Um, I want to die in, in bed where I feel most comfortable. Because that's the best way to die. Like, anyone will tell you, like, the best way to die is to die in your sleep. Anyone that's died will tell you <laughs> the best way to die is to die in your sleep. Um, but I do have a big problem with that kind of death. There's no story to that kind of death. If you die in your sleep, someone just says, hey, how did Andrew die? I go, he died in his sleep. And they're like, oh. <laughs> is that a bad? Hey, didn't that, didn't that guy steal my toaster? <laughs> he never gave me that toaster back. <laughs> and I've stolen a lot of toasters. <laughs> and I don't want people to be talking about how many toasters I've taken. <laughs> so if I die in a way that's not a story, people will get right down to the amount of toasters I've taken. <laughs> so I need to die with a story. It works every time. Think about it. JFK, one of the greatest presidents, right? He was shot. Exploded. <laughs> That's like one of the most accurate adjectives for what happened. To me. And now everyone talks about how great he was all the time, but like when you look at him as a president, he was like a president for like a day. And he did nothing except for have sex with like Marilyn Monroe or something. Like literally, like most of his accomplishments were like he was on the way to doing that. Like he was gonna do some stuff with civil rights, but then his head exploded. So we'll give him that. And he was gonna go to the moon, but then his head exploded. <laughs> so we'll give him that too. But there's a problem with that too. I don't wanna die like JFK. He died in Dallas. I'd have to go to Texas. <laughs> Which I was like thinking about, like should I make a joke against Texas? But I decided the chances of someone from Texas watching a Cambridge, Massachusetts public access <laughs> variety show was so minute that if they did, it would be like one of those circumstances where like they're my true love. Like it'd be, like, it'd be a very like impassioned person about this and they'd like contact me and be like, you made fun of my home state. And I'd be like, what are you talking about? I only made fun of Texas. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'd fall in love because we hated each other so much. That's what I want anyway. So if you're out there, 
<laughs> Coming for you. Anyway, I don't want to die like JFK. I'm going to say right now. That is not how I want to die. I want to die like not JFK. I want to die in my bed. But I want the notoriety and the support from my peers that JFK got after he exploded. So I also <laughs> want to explode. So that's why I'm going to die in my bed. So. <laughs> But what I'm going to do is, starting now, every night I go to bed, because every night could be the night. <laughs> I'm going to hook myself up, probably by the thingy, <laughs> to a heart rate monitor that's going to monitor my heart rate, wait until it goes, bada bing, bada bing. <laughs> and then that will activate, once I hit zero, <laughs> that will activate a Rube Goldberg. <laughs> so that way, the conversation will be more like, hey, how did Andrew Steele die? And I'll be like, well, he died in his sleep. <laughs> but then a marble. <laughs> <laughs> Down a track. <laughs> did a loop. <laughs> into some dominoes. <laughs> Spelled out sayonara suckers. <laughs> Activated a trigger that blew up his whole body. <laughs> Did you say a marble went down a track? <laughs> yeah, I did a loop. <laughs> and did you say it hit into some dominoes that spelled out a word? It spelled out two words. <laughs> and then it hit a trigger? Yeah, that made him explode. Like JFK. <laughs> I gave that man my toaster. <laughs> and that's exactly what I want them to say. <laughs> so what was the propaganda show? This camera now. Go oh, this camera now. Yeah. Here we are. The propaganda show. We're about to actually start it. We got crazy. Uh, it's going to be crazy. And that's what we got. This show is just my, my fever dream of stupidity. But it's not on me. There's a lot of other people that make this just as stupid. Because we're going to have other performers. We're going to have artists. We're going to have Jimmy B on this thing. Jimmy B. <laughs> yeah, that's Jimmy B. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If you think that's all we got, well, that's all we have right now. But maybe in the future we'll have more. Maybe we'll have politicians. Maybe we'll have... <laughs> but for now, we have our next performer, who is a gem of a human. One of my favorite comedians in Boston. Please put your hand together for Carly Marulli. <laughs> Thank you, Jimmy. <laughs> Thanks, Jimmy. Uh, it's great to be here. Uh, I, I consider myself an artist. Um, I think I make things. I only say this because... I recently found out that, you know when you order a latte um, and they do the little design? That's called latte art. <laughs> I don't know about that, guys. <laughs> I say that because every time I've ordered a latte, it's the same design. I think we all know what shape I'm describing. It's kind of like a, like a shouting, echoing vagina <laughs> type shape. It's a beautiful design, uh, but it's always the same thing. And I, I hesitate to call a practice art if every piece is always exactly the same. Like, would music be as big a deal if every song was Hotel California? <laughs> I don't know. Would jewelry making be a beautiful and respected practice if every piece was a friendship bracelet that said Shannon? <laughs> I doubt it. And, uh, I think you guys can see this next one coming. Would costume design have its own category at the Emmys if every character were dressed in the grand tradition of Medea? <laughs> I just don't think so. I'm just saying let's be careful about who we call artists. Just keep making coffee. <laughs> I, uh, I saw some great art recently. Uh, I'm in college, so I spend a lot of time in dorm rooms. I was in my friend's dorm, and I was looking at her roommate's wall, because she had a lot of posters and decorations. I noticed this one poster it truly shocked me. It said, keep calm, 
I solemnly swear that this pussy grabs back. <laughs> um, <laughs> wow. Uh, to just break that down real quick, Keep Calm is from those Keep Calm and Carry On posters. Uh, I solemnly swear is from Harry Potter, and this pussy grabs back is like a Trump thing. <laughs> so when you put it all together, that means absolutely nothing. <laughs> uh, you cannot just put all of your fave pop culture references in like a salad spinner <laughs> and expect the result to be anything at all. Um, I've noticed that's kind of a popular thing to make stuff like that. Um, so I, I guess I'd like to cash in on that phenomenon. So maybe I'll make a few posters in, a, in that same vein. I think my first one would be like, free Brady vibes only, Felicia. <laughs> <laughs> People might like that one. And then maybe like, oh, like live from New York, it's Saturdays are for the boys, lives matter. <laughs> <laughs> that one's a little longer. Um, hmm. I like a lot of music from the 1980s. I think that was a great time for music. Um, I think the difference, I like music now too, but I think there's a big difference in lyric writing. Uh, because what makes music from the 80s so good is that the lyrics are like declarative sentences. They're all statements. It's like if you listen to a song from the 80s, it's like, I'm a man, this is my car. <laughs> Get out of my car. And it's like, oh, okay, cool. And uh, songs now are good too, I like them, but like the lyrics are just a little different because they're like, yeah, <laughs> what do you mean by that? <laughs> what are you going to do about it? They're like raspy little sentences <laughs> that you might whisper to your favorite bird. <laughs> Still good, just different. And uh, yeah, music. I, uh, the other day I saw one of my favorite things happen. I love when this happens. It's when you're in a, a coffee shop and you see someone order a hot chocolate. Uh, I love this because when someone orders a coffee, there's a reason. You're doing some work, you need to stay awake, you need the caffeine. That's great, I get it. You don't need a hot chocolate, and you never do. Uh, so I'm always curious about what kind of person is ordering it. Like they. The barista was just like, oh, like one hot chocolate and put it up on the bar. And I was just like, all right, let's see. And I always expect it to be like a little old lady in a yellow rain jacket with like chopsticks in her hair. And she'll snatch it and she'll pogo stick away. <laughs> it wasn't that this time. I watched the cup and I was just like, all right, whose silly mug of fun is this? And it was a business guy in a suit with a little twinkle in his eye. And he snatched it and he pogo sticked away. <laughs> Thank you. We're running low on time, but we want to get some interviews in. So we're going to do something that I'm going to call Pass the Mic. Ah. Ow. I'm here with Carly now, who just Hi. performed. Carly, you did a wonderful job. Another round of applause for Carly. Um, Carly, so the first question I want to ask you mm -hmm. is that you did, uh, did a couple bits about... Actually, no, the first question I want to ask is, when was the first time you did stand-up? Do you remember? When was the first time? Yeah, um, I was 18 years old. I was a freshman in college. Uh, would you like me to say where I did stand-up? Yeah. A nightclub called The Middle East. Uh -huh. uh, love it. And uh, was that, was that like, on a, like, why did you do Do you have a brief memory really quick? Like, what propelled you? Is it just you always wanted to? Or did someone say, go up there? Uh, I always wanted to. And then when my name was called, someone said, go up there. <laughs> I'd love a blueberry if you're offering. <laughs> you took one first. Yeah, I got one first. Mm -hmm. you enjoy it? Let me. Okay, so <laughs> my next question, my final question is going to be, um, you did some jokes that were about uh, going to coffee places, coffee houses. That's true. They, they talk about like the time when there was like coffee house music like really started. And now like Starbucks has kind of turned that into like a brand. But right. there's like this idea of like a lot of musicians get started at like open mics and coffee houses. Now I know, I don't know if this was always the case, but now it definitely seems like there's a lot of comedians that are performing at coffee houses and stuff. You did some jokes about coffee houses. Do you think that we're kind of entering that weird hipstery comedians and coffee houses kind of phase? Oh man, I hope so. That's like an absolute dream. Um, I, I worry about uh, the kind of mindset people are in um, when they go to a, a coffee place. I think cafes and coffee places have become kind of workspaces now. 
Um, so I, I would be curious to see if they were just spontaneous comedy performances, how that would jive with people <laughs> working on their laptops and such, calling their uncles. <laughs> Thank you very much, Carly. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you for being on the show. Oh, really quick. Do you have anything that you want to plug? Do you have anything that you do? And or do you have like a website? I don't know. I don't have a website, thank God. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, I do host a uh, stand-up comedy show at Boston University. It's called Flat Waffle Comedy Hour. It's a uh, bi-weekly on Tuesdays at 9 p.m. in BU Central. Yeah. Well, I have a new look at Boston University. <laughs> Thank you very much. Once again, to Colin Marilla. Thank you. You may exit the stage. Hello. Hey, guys. We're on to our next performer. She came all the way here from Brandeis to make you laugh. So please give her a warm welcome. Put your hands together for the fabulous Nina Bond. <laughs> Oh, get it out of here. Oh, right oh, off the cuff, that joke just <laughs> came out of me. Um, I'm so excited to be on television. I've never been on television before. Um, and I looked up what you should do before you come on television, like what words you're not allowed to say. And, um, so I'm just going to say them all um, right now. Um, Get ready. <laughs> this is big for me. Um, you're a mother beep. <laughs> I hate your beep, beep, beep. I'm going to beep you in the hole. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God we got that out of the way. Now I can get to the real good jokes of, that I'm about to tell you. Um, <laughs> I also, uh, I public access television. Says, it says that if you do something a little educational, that the government will fund you. And that would be great <coughs> for me. I don't have much money, so I'm going to uh, tell you guys about what I learned. I study environmental studies. And when I tell people that, um, they go, oh, yeah, I could, see, I could see that you study environmental studies, which is um, code for, oh, yes, you, you do look dirty. <laughs> <laughs> I, I could see that. Um, so because I study environmental studies, I'm curious about a couple of things. Um, one thing I'm curious about is like, guys, how do plants have a midnight snack? Because <laughs> <laughs> um, I love those. Uh, another thing that I think about, because I also study women and gender studies, is like, why are we still, this is the intersection of the two of them, why are we still throwing uh, babies in the dumpster? Like, women have the right <laughs> Women have the right to choose, um, but guys, it's almost 2018, and they're compostable people, and they're compostable. <laughs> Just re reduce, reuse, recycle. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> um, I, I study women and gender studies as well, and um, I try to practice radical acts of feminism in my daily life. Like one thing, I, I always jaywalk. I, <laughs> I always jaywalk because I just hate little white men telling me what to do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to make you come. You can't make me. Are you a wizard with a magic wand? Because <laughs> I have one, so. <laughs> oh, beep. <laughs> I tried to get it all out. Um, <laughs> how does that work le later? Can you choose what sound it is? Because I would like it to be like any fart noise. <laughs> <laughs> any of them. Because that would automatically make this a lot. Okay. I can make a fart noise. There you go. <laughs> um, I forgot what I was talking about. Women in gender studies. <laughs> um, okay, so... Sometimes I think I'm a feminist, and then other times I, I don't. And one of the times that I don't think I'm a feminist is like when I'm on my period. And it's just like, I totally think women can do it, but like I should not be in the Oval Office when, <laughs> like once a month. <laughs> it's just like, oh, I'm going to nuke them. I guess no one likes that because we're all woke here. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I love a room of woke white people. <laughs> you know we're getting to the real.
Um, <laughs> wow, this is like TV's a little scary um, <laughs> because all, everyone could see this for the rest of my life um, if they wanted to Google it. Um, one thing I Googled is whether you can have sex on your period. You can. Um, but like a lot of the results that came up were very interesting. Like one person was like, don't do it, it's gross. It is, but <laughs> you have to say that. Um, <laughs> and another one was like, I, I took the period blood and I used it for finger painting. What? We just put a towel down. It's fine. <laughs> um, I, I, um, I don't look like a person that has sex. <laughs> um, but once I had a threesome, what? Said the entire crowd. <laughs> Thank you. And it's not something that I can uh, orchestrate myself. I had help. Um, uh, we were at a party and we were dancing up on a guy. And uh, my friend, I guess I won't say your name because this is television, <laughs> um, was like, uh, I was like, let's, let's have a threesome. And she's like, huh? A threesome? What are you saying? A threesome! <laughs> We did have a threesome. And so we proposed the first guy, and the first guy said, oh, no thanks, I'm too sad, me too, buddy, <laughs> me too. And then we proposed to the next guy, and he, um, his name, I don't care, <laughs> Juan Pedro. <laughs> Juan Pedro is a Brazilian man um, who speaks Portuguese, and my other friend, who I respect, so I won't say her name. Um, <laughs> I don't respect men. <laughs> uh, my other friend was like, speaks Spanish, she's Colombian. And so they're, they're really hitting it off because Spanish and Portuguese, you guys, very similar languages. We get back to the room, the three of us in the Trace Amigos in the bed. Um, <laughs> and it starts to get hot, caliente. <laughs> and heavy, whatever the Spanish word for heavy is. Um, we're all in there rolling around, and he's like, talk dirty to me, and I'm like, uh, muy grande, <laughs> no es pequeño, <laughs> <laughs> me gusta. <laughs> and so it happened, it, it's over, it uh, completed, no one can finish, but it, 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 it's finished. <laughs> and I'm just really worried, because I'm like, who gets to raise... El Chico Nino. <laughs> like if, if it's one of us, I'm still concerned. Uh, I, I've been learning Spanish, though. Um, I've get, been getting better, and I'm finally at the point in my Spanish where I can overshare. At first, you learn how to say, like, hola, como estas? Um, and then you learn how to say, like, what you like and what you don't like. And now I can say, like, mi mama se murió. Yo tengo UTI <laughs> <laughs> with a bunch of strangers. <laughs> That's really exciting for me because I could do it in English, but now I feel much more well versed. <laughs> um, I went to France once where they don't speak English, but they do speak the language of subtleties and eye contact. And in uh, France, eye contact means something a lot different than it means here. And here, I, what I thought that when you look in the eye, it's just like, I'm curious about what's going on in your head. There, it's like, I want to. Beep. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and so I look someone in the eye, God, um, and he says to me, you're a dirty girl and I'm a shy guy, which I thought was the opposite of what was true. <laughs> but um, then I realized that in uh, France, Opposite day must just be a real holiday. <laughs> um, another thing about Paris in particular is that it's a city built on dead bodies. Oh, <laughs> disgusting. And you can go down and you can look at them. And all throughout the dead body zone, the, all the skulls, um, the catacombs, as they call them, uh, <laughs> there are signs that say, don't touch the skulls. That, that was my <laughs> <laughs> Don't touch the skulls. <laughs> I don't know how TV works. <laughs> um, don't touch the skulls. Like, oh, guys, I touched the skull. I just, um, and nothing's happened yet. Um, and so I'm, um, I could be haunted. 
I definitely feel spooky. Uh, <laughs> I guess I'll say one last thing, if I can think of it. Um, yeah. yeah. I have an, I have an ex-boyfriend and, uh, oh god, no. Um, I have an ex-boyfriend. <laughs> and my ex-boyfriend uh, hates it, absolutely hates it when I talk about anal on stage. Um, and that's okay, I don't listen to him because he's a big pain in the ass. <laughs> Small pain in the ass, you guys. Small, uncircumcised pain in the ass. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. I'm here with Mina Bond, who just performed quite the performance. <laughs> Mina, would you like a blueberry? Yeah, I'll go for it. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Great. So, Mina, you did some jokes today that were a little explicit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I realized that I never passed you the mic when you said you'd take a blueberry, but she said she'd have one. <laughs> um, so the thing is, I want to know is, was there a point after, like, because this story, you had a little of censoring of, like, who was in it. Right. Like, you know, names and not names. But there must have been a decision. There must have been a long process of, will I tell this story and mm. whose names will I be in it? Was that a hard part of this? Um, I guess I don't. You can take it. Oh, I'm, a, <laughs> I'm a performer. You should hold it for me. Um, <laughs> I guess I, I asked my, my friend if she was okay with it. Um, after I did it, um, and she said yes, which was great because I had already done it. Um, <laughs> so I didn't feel any guilt. And then I, I've never asked uh, the third to our trio, um, but I hope he's okay with it. I mean, <laughs> it was, I think that he also perhaps saw the humor in the situation. Um, maybe not, maybe there was a language barrier that. But sometimes humor doesn't, I don't know. Um, but there, it was, I think it's okay. I think everyone's feeling good, um, better than that night. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I'm sorry, I don't like that. Um, if you could, this is a bit of a hard question, but we got, we're short on time. Yeah. So you got to make it quick. Okay. But if you could simplify one of the, like, the reasons, your goal when you do stand-up, like, why are you doing it? Do you oh. have an idea of that? Is it for you? Is it for other people? What is it? What is it? <laughs> Um, I think it's to what I love hearing people laugh at, in particular me. <laughs> <laughs> um, and also, like, I like saying things that I shouldn't say, like, um, in conversation. I don't know, there's a lot of power that comes with having a mic, and I, I definitely take full advantage of it. Really cool. Um, all right, and the last thing I got to know is, do you have anything you want to plug, anything you're a part of? Do you have a website? I also don't have a, a website. Thank God. Um, <laughs> I, I wish, um, <laughs> uh, I'm looking for someone to start it up if anyone's good with website sites. <laughs> Simplesite.com. I made a blog once. Can we have it? It's called meetabond.simplesite.com. <laughs> <laughs> um, check it out. <laughs> We'll put that at the bottom of the screen right now so you guys can get that. Thank you so much, Mina Bond. Sure, Another round of applause. Awesome. Oh, come to her shows. Come to my shows. Whatever. Yeah. Enjoy. Yeah. Right here. Yeah. All right. Eyes on me, Aaron. Okay, here we go. All right, so I'm going to bring up your next performers, guys. It's one performer. I think I'm just putting this there. Guys, this next guy is ridiculous. He's insane. He's a mad man. He's my friend. <laughs> Put your hands together for the very funny Jordan the Filippo. <laughs> Uh, no thing.
things prepared today. Uh, I didn't even really want to do this, uh, but <laughs> I texted Andrew earlier and I was like, hey, I don't have anything prepared. And he said, well, why don't you just uh, talk about your own trauma? And I said, oh, that'll be fun. <laughs> um, so we're going to do that. Uh, get ready. Uh, this is real tragic. Uh, so I was, I was a sophomore in high school. This is really sad. I was a sophomore in high school and uh, there was a party with all the seniors that I didn't go to. And one of the seniors, a girl, um, shit her pants. <laughs> um, and that was, that was a formative experience for me because it's the first time I realized party pooper is a literal term. <laughs> it's like a, like it, it's, it's, we use it for annoying people, but it's derived from a real place. <laughs> like, like before it was just like, uh, ah, they're going to be bad. But like at one point it was like, Hey, don't invite Steve. He craps himself around balloons. <laughs> um, and you know, that was, um, it was it was hard to see her go through that to to see people call her names like Annie the Fanny um, and Fart Basket uh, and uh, Hey get out of here we hate you um, uh, and uh, she ended up having to leave school because she was so humiliated it was it was really hard to watch um, uh, you know what they say sticks and stones break your bones but words will never hurt you. Um, which, you know, we should have just broken her bones. That way, <laughs> that way she could have stayed put and not been able to leave while we were making fun of her. Um, <laughs> and at the time, you know, I thought, um, it, that must be so hard to be humiliated on that level. Um, and thank God it has never happened to me. Uh, and then recently I realized um, it had, at the time, previously happened to me something similar uh, <laughs> involving a lot of shame. I, it just had not happened in public, and so I was able to internalize it um, and repress it. So um, this, this happened when I was in eighth grade. Um, I, uh, I decided that I was masturbating too much. Uh, it was a problem. Uh, it was at a point where uh, I'd, I'd hear the car come down the driveway for my parents getting back from getting groceries, and I'd be like, ah, once more. Um, and so I, I decided I needed to quit cold turkey um, and just get completely off the stuff, because it is a drug. It really is. Um, and um, so I, I did good. I, I was a good little boy. For a <laughs> <laughs> about 12 days, 14 days, I made it that far, which is, which is a feat, um, but uh, it got to the, I, sh I should have, I should have mentioned, I should have started this differently, I should have said um, that I, you guys are going to think differently of me after this, I should have said that I had not had a wet dream at that time, I had heard of wet dreams, I'd, I'd been in the classroom, where they'd been like, um, it's natural, you're supposed to do it, and if, if you don't, then you get a little, you get a little thing, you get a little present at the night time. That's what my health teacher was like, I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> They're all just like, oh, these are all little surprises that you're getting, <laughs> periods and, and, and semen. It's all fun, it's like Santa. Um, and um, I had not had that at the time, so I, I was riding high on this, on this uh, quitting the, the juice, um, and uh, I, I, I got to this two-week mark. Um, I had a moment uh, where I was, I was in hockey practice. Um, I, that is funny that I played hockey. Um, and I was skating down the ice. Uh, I, the, the, the drill was to skate up the ice, receive a pass, and then go and shoot. And so I, I skated down the ice. I received the pass, and then I jizzed in my pants <laughs> just so much, just too much, a horrible amount. I didn't want to do this. I said this up front. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I, what do you, what do you do at that point? Even you just, you can't say, oh, I, I got to get off the ice. No, you finish practice. <laughs> you go and you shoot the puck. And listen, I've I've never received a pass that good since. It, it will not get better than that. 
<laughs> um, that's the peak of passes for me. Um, I don't know if I have, I have like another, you want me to wrap up? Yeah. I'll wrap up. <laughs> um, uh, thanks. Thanks for sitting through me. <laughs> I did not say, talk about jizzing in your pants. <laughs> and I would not say that I particularly wanted you to. <laughs> what do you guys say? Well, now I think it's up to the viewers at home to decide who exactly they believe. Um, but I, I, I don't know, it's it funnier if you if it was forced. Do you not agree? <laughs> Do you have anything you want to plug? Do you have a website? Um, I, I don't have a website. Um, I, I do um, have a SoundCloud. I'm not going to plug that because that seems annoying. I'm, I will plug uh, my friend Eli's uh, SoundCloud. Uh, SoundCloud.com slash Eli TV, I believe. Yeah. Um, go there. He makes great music. Um, and check out Slow Children at Play if you want. <laughs> Get off the stage. Okay. I'm gonna pause for the build up. Now we're gonna go through a quick message, but when we come back, guys, you see all this art around here? It's pretty cool. Let's, let's so this is this is Ross Buecher. Um, this is his a painting of a man named Ross Buecher by a man named Ross Buecher because he makes paintings. He did all the cool art that you see on these walls. So I want to show you him. Because he does art, and without art, beep life. So let's go on a journey with Ross Beaker right after these messages. Everybody on planet Earth loves Grey's Anatomy, and now there's finally a show where you can watch people you don't know talk about it. This show is about the show Grey's Anatomy. So, um, another patient in the show, uh, he, one of these are the things he has to have. You should ask me how artery is spelled? Join Allie Miller and Andrew Decino as they talk about all things Grey's on The Grey Area. Live every Thursday night at 8 p.m. on Cambridge Community Television. Welcome back to the Propaganda Show. <laughs> yep. All right, guys, it's time for the final segment of this first episode. I'm here with Ross Buecher. He's on the other side of this wall. Touch my hand, Ross. Oh, hello. He's also the painting behind me because he is a painter and a good friend. Jolly old Ross. He's a very talented guy, and I want him to give us a really quick, really brief rundown of what it's like to do his kind of painting because it's rather interesting. Uh, start now. Awesome. Thanks for having me, Andrew. Of course. Um, so what you have in front of you is a piece of paper that I covered. It was a black piece of paper. I covered it with white paper to give it a texture. You could use white paper yourself, but I like to have a little bit of texture that the white gives. We're working on a very big scale. Um, if you want to do this on a small scale, what I might recommend doing is printing out a picture a photograph, and then uh, taking an oil pastel, tracing over it, pressing it over on your white paper, and then you'll get an imprint that you'll cover over with an oil pastel to make it thicker. That's basically what this process was here. I drew out an original one, pressed it on, got it for me and Andrew. We're gonna start painting. Um, Andrew, I want you to look at your painting in front of you. My person, yes. Yes. Um, I want you to just look at the features, 
I'm looking at them. Yeah, you're gonna make a choice in a second. Oh boy. Painting's a series of choices, okay? Oh, okay. We're gonna make a lot of them. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm pumped. I want you to just pinpoint one thing. It could be an eyebrow, could be the nose, could be just a simple line. Notice if it's rigid, if it's like loopy. It knows the quality about it. You don't need to tell me, just notice it. Okay. Okay. Do this feels like it? a magic trick. It will be in a second, because okay. now we're gonna choose a color, and that's where the magic happens, Andrew. Okay. Choose okay. a color that you think matches that, you know? So let's say oh. if it's very rigid um, and like pointy, I might think of a red. It doesn't need to make sense. It just needs to be a choice that you make. I've made a choice. Ross. Okay, what's the color, Andrew? Oh, I tell you? Yeah, tell me. It was red. Okay. <laughs> That's incredible. Um, so now we're going to pick out, we're going to use this light body paint. I also have a heavy body paint. A heavy body paint is thicker. It creates its own texture. This one will use the texture behind it. So okay. it will kind of mimic that. Let's look for a red. The fun thing about okay. this is that these are all the colors that I have. I don't have all the colors. I use a lot of my colors. So if you want Something sometimes it's not going to be there, and then oh, you have yeah. to improvise, and that's also fun. Really. Well, what's so this? Like is this just covered in red? That is red, but it's a thicker. You want? Let's okay. use this one. You know? Okay. Yeah, do it. So I'm squeezing it onto here. Yeah, I'm going to help you out though, because it's going to be a little blocked up. Oh, I'm so going to take a scissor. Some people put the caps back on. I don't, because uh, I'm in a rush all the time. And I like <laughs> to get things done. Putting this back up. Um, so what I like to do is just dip my hand fingers in a couple times yeah. and then I get like this nice you see it's almost like like a mountain coming up yeah on oh. my finger Ooh, try like to like that. dip and get a mountain if you can oh, dip dip for the mountains dip for the mountain I just go one on each hand oh. yeah I'm trying to get them on all fingers I think that's a bad idea but it's all right no it's no, right. no that's fun Andrew <laughs> okay cool um so now I this is going to be great because I can't see what you have yeah I can and I can't see what, see what you have. have um so find points where the texture shows the black underneath you know so okay. it's not thick white you understand what I'm uh, saying? Yes, yes. Like there's black peeking out from the white. Peeking out is a great word. Okay, to use. cool. I got it. So in the places where it's peeking out, I want you to cover that with the paint. What I'm going to do is I like squares, so mm -hmm. I'm just going to do a little bit here, a little bit up here, a little bit up here, a little bit it's up here. It's amazing that I have no idea what up here means. I know, but you, you can figure that out. <laughs> you could and be starting at the belly. <laughs> and so I just used the forehead. I uh, found a uh, spot where the texture is the way I was describing to you, peeking through covered it there and I'm just gonna go through and find places like that all throughout the face I like to space it out mm. as I go I'm just kind of working my way down oh. that way it creates an evenly spaced out area uh, just gonna keep going a little bit lower right now I am at the beginning of the shirt on the right side I have four patches that I've done I like to think of them as patches right now because it's kind of like a quilt we're just putting together colors oh. in an assemblage I like that a lot isn't that nice yeah yeah my mom does quilts and I kind of grew up with quilts all around and I just like that association with colors. You got quilting in your blood it seems. I definitely do Andrew. <laughs> I definitely have it on my walls. Um, <laughs> so I have gone through and I'm pretty happy. I'm gonna do a little bit more but I'm pretty happy with my red layer. I haven't covered. There's oh, still you a would describe what you're doing as a layer. I guess uh, I would. So yeah. I have my patches throughout and I'm gonna switch to my next color. Okay. Uh, I, I'd like you to do the same right now, even yeah. if you aren't at the same point. No, I'm ready. I'm ready. Oh, I know you are. Um, <laughs> so now I'm going to think of a color that goes along with this red. I want to think of it as like an entire mm. piece right now. So I'm going to look okay. at, I'm just going to step back. I bid you to do the same. I'm bidded. Amazing. Um, and how many, is there a lot of peaking spaces or is there spaces or there's not a lot of peaking spaces? Where there's the black coming through? Yes. Um, there's a decent amount. We're either going to choose a color that goes with red. I, d I have a dark red. You have mm. a little bit of a lighter red. So a color of a similar tone. Or we're going to pick a color that kind of is like an opposite to it. Okay. So an opposite, I think, to this would be a light blue to okay. the one I have. Um, I like the idea of doing an opposite. Look at yours. Think of the opposite color. Just make a choice. I, I want to go with this one. That's perfect. I want to go with this green-ish. Is this turquoise? Yeah, I think uh, it is bright aqua green. So I will call that turquoise. That's fantastic. You know what? I'm going to, let's see if, if there's any left in here. Because if there's more left in here, because you're mixing heavy body and light body, oh, which is geez. totally fine to do, but it just creates <laughs> a different. Here's a fun trade trick. If you're ever at home, you finish up your thing. It looks like there's nothing left. There's always a little more left. <laughs> just take scissors. There's open always, this up. always a little more left. Always a little more left. Don't waste paint. It's paint. Except I waste the ones on my tips, but I mean, I don't have time. <laughs> um, okay. Going to open this up. And then this is a little bit trickier. Just finding the area there. Cool. Slide this through here. And voila. Got a lot more. Ooh. 
Oh my god. Right? Isn't that I'm fun? Act, that's worth the applause. That's it, really good. That's exciting. All right, I'm going to uh, start smothering this. Yeah, start smothering through. Keep finding peaking areas. Create it all the way through. I'm going to use the same color because I really like this color. It's one of my um, favorites. Yeah. Yeah, good color. <laughs> Andrew, what made you want me to paint on your show? Um, well, one thing, I'm a big fan, Rob. Yeah. But the other thing, the thing that oh, made you. me want, want you okay. is that um, you do something really interesting. We're painting with our fingers right now. Oh, we so are. And not a lot of people paint with their fingers that are older than five. <laughs> <laughs> but you do it, and you do it so darn well, and in a way that makes other people so impressed. And yeah. also because any time I've ever witnessed this, which I have witnessed it without as much uh, tutelage before, um, I've been like, this is just astonishing to watch, let alone participate in. And so I wanted to try to participate in it and get to have other people watch it. So, um, Those are so many kind words. It sounds like I forced you to say them by asking that question. Yeah, but it does sound like that. No, that's very sweet, Andrew. And <laughs> I'm glad that you feel that way. Because it's really, I like painting with my fingers mm. because you have a lot of control. It can be really quick and it can be yeah. spontaneous. And I think it's a lot of fun to just actually feel the canvas and feel the textures happening. Because you can witness it happening with a brush, but I don't think you can feel it as much. Uh, um, oh, that's a good point. You, re you are the brush. You are the brush. Does that sound like a good, good card? Okay, I'm moving on to my next color. It's a yellow. Uh, that's what I want. Um, what, why are you doing yellow? I don't know. I just see yellow. Okay, I see... I see. What do you see? I see. I see. No, I see I, green. Let, can I tell you why I chose yellow? Yeah, I'll think please about do. it for a second. I do see you green. You asked now. me. You see green? Perfect. I have a green for you. This <laughs> oh, green right here. Green. If you want to make it lighter, we can mix some white with it. Is that something you like? I kind of want a strong green. A strong Is green. That okay. That's a great choice, Andrew. Okay. Um, I'm still just like covering stuff. These the, black parts. Keep working on it. Yeah, that's what you're doing right now. With that yellow with that green. I'm using yellow. Uh, I wanted a yellow because I like yellow a lot right now, and also. Um, <laughs> It's in right now. <laughs> it definitely is. And I think yellow is a primary color, correct? Uh, audience? Yeah. Cool. <laughs> and Some of the audience gave thumbs up. <laughs> and so, so is red, right? Yes. And blue is as well, correct? Yeah. yeah. Wait, what's right? green and yellow make? Uh, Contemporary. Contemporary? <laughs> All right, that's enough from the audience. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think since I kind of was going all over the board with two, I think this kind of is a bluish, even uh, though the thing said awkward. I'm green. going back on some of the colors. Is that okay? Like I'd I love that, I Andrew. I want to see. I want to know your process too at the end of this. Oh, I want to know it too, Ross. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm just kind of speeding up right now because I know we're a little crunched for time. What I'm doing, Andrew, every time I put a color, I take a step back because okay. I want to see what that did to the yeah, whole thing. Yeah, I I hadn't been doing that, and I just did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that that helps. There is an effect. <laughs> um, yeah. And in a minute, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reach for this stick right here. I really love these because this is an oil stick. Oh, wow. It is paint in a stick. So that if my amazing. camera will see this, if I just go like this right here, it looks like a marker. But then I can smear it around. It's a lot of fun. Um, so I'm just going to go through and cover up this area. I'm doing, I want to have like a thick-ish coat because I have a thick body paint. I want that kind of thickness to be throughout. Another option would be to kind of leave it like this, kind of zigzaggy. Um, but that's not what I'm going for in this one. I'm going to use a little bit of black paint as well because I'm cheating a little bit because we're crunched on time. And just take it, I'm going to use all my fingers. Just all, all the up fingies. in here. Put it like this little center repository. And then I'm going to pull out and then go a little bit farther out, a little bit farther out, then down and up. And then as I'm going, I'm like scooping up from the center area and then bringing it down. Scooping up, bringing it down. Scooping up, bringing it up. Scooping up, bringing it over here. Scooping it up, bringing it here. Scooping it up, bringing it here. <laughs> and now I just kind of smooth all around. Smooth all around. Smooth all and down. Okay, okay, okay. Here we are just kind of touching this up. Quick, 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 quick. I There's like a that. lot going on there, Ross. Yeah, Andrew, I'm going at it. Now I'm going to do the same thing over on the glove right now, right in the center, right here. Scooping it up, bringing it over here. Scooping it up, that? bringing it over here. <laughs> How's it going, Andrew? You trying that out? I am trying. Yeah? Oh. It working for you? I need uh, a little bit more. Ross, I think we're just about out of time. Oh, no. Let me, let's go quick right yeah. now. Yeah. All right. Can I look at yours and we're you look at mine? Yeah, yeah. I would love for to see yours. I'd love to see yours. I'd love to see yours. <laughs> All right, Ross, why don't we turn ours? Okay. All right.
Wow, you got some nice squares going. I like the squares, Andrew. Okay, so I really, I heard the scooping sound and I thought that was a different thing. I'll tell you what, I love that. That is a lot All of right. fun. Can we All move right. a little bit more? I wanna see more of it. Yeah, oh, please, please keep doing that. So there she is. <laughs> Uh, who is this, by the way? This is Ronda Rousey. Ronda Rousey. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. Um, guys, uh, this is Ross Buecher. This uh, is Andrew Justino. Oh, my God. That's so nice. We're also, right here, we're going to show a little a picture of what um, some of the finished products. They look really nice. They're I like floor, how you Ross. have the shapes going, and you have uh, much more of just, like, colors attack. Yeah, that's the light body right there. Oh, light body. Ooh. All right. So now, guys, that is the end of our show. This has been the first episode of The Propaganda Show. Whoa! Thanks for having me. Thanks you to Ross Buecher. Um, you can find his art on the internet. Yeah. I'll put a little thing right here that says his Instagram. And thank you to my other performers and guests, including Carly Marulli, Mina Bond, and Jizz Pants. <laughs> Jordan DeFilippo. If they have internet things, they are popping up right here. Guys, thank you for watching us. Thank you to everyone at CCTV, including Phil and Beth and Aaron Wong in the studio, because you guys have done an amazing job. And thank you to the community for helping support silly people doing silly things. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns about this show, please send me an email at thepropagandashow at gmail.com. It's going to appear here. If you want to be on this show, sure, why not? Send me that email, too. If you uh, want someone else to be on the show, you can try to get them on the show and then send me an email about it. If you want someone not to be on the show, tell me because I'll <laughs> make sure they're not on the show. If you have something else to put on the show or take from the show, tell me on the show and that will be cool. I really enjoyed doing this for you guys and I hope you enjoyed doing this for me, which is the watching it part. And I also hope even if you're like, that dude's really annoying, you got to watch the parts where this dude wasn't on the show and those people were not that annoying. Oh. So thank you very much and thank you to the audience. Stay safe, guys. I'll see you next time. Bada bing.